How's everybody doing? Today we are comparing some Hollywood movie cameras to an iPhone XS Max video. First of all, no, this is not a pink phone, okay? It's gold according to a bunch of smart people at Apple. Lots of under the hood improvements on the video camera on this thing, so we're gonna be comparing it to this red camera and an Aerie Alexa, all these cameras that they use to shoot big Hollywood movies. Yes, maybe I've done this once, twice, eight times before in the past, but this time it's gonna be a different result because of how smart they made this video camera. It's gonna be an interesting one and also I like view so please subscribe. Now before we get into this ridiculous experiment I just want to give a quick golf clap to the squad gang that discovered telomerase. If you don't know what telomerase are <laughs> Oh, brosive, you are missing out. Now we're all made out of like a kajillion different cells, right? And if we take a closer look, there's a bunch of these like little DNA strands all scattered up in there. And these strands are held together with something called telomeres, which a lot of scientists describe them as like these plastic caps at the end of your shoelaces. As these plastic caps unravel, they start to fray and eventually it just falls apart. It's very similar to the way our DNA works. We're all basically born with like these nice long telomeres at the end of all our DNA strands. But from the moment we're born, they slowly start to shorten every time the cells divide. That's how forensic scientists can look at a blood stain, look at that DNA, measure that telomere, and generally estimate how old this person was. A lot of people call it life's fuse because you can see it gets shorter and shorter. And when that happens, age-related diseases will come asking you if you want to Netflix and chill, and that bucket will get kicked. Are you terrified yet? So were these three people. And they basically went out to find the oldest living thing on earth, which was a bristlecone pine tree measured to be over 5,000 years. They went up to that tree and went, give me your ways. They did some science stuff, probably did like a ritual dance around the tree and discovered an enzyme called telomerase. And this telomerase enzyme in this tree gave the ability to this tree to split cells without shrinking the telomere. And remember telomeres and telomerase may sound similar, but they're not. Telomeres are the shoelace caps. Telomerase are what protect the shoelace caps. So after these three finished their ritual dance around the tree, they were like, look what we found. And they got a Nobel prize for physiology and medicine for 2009. So ever since then, people a lot smarter than me have been trying to figure out how to use the telomerase information and apply it to humans. Turns out we have a lot of telomerase inside our bodies already. Now there's still a lot of studies that need to be done, but in the last decade, we have learned what helps with telomere activity and what doesn't. Two worst things you could be doing to burn that fuse way faster than it needs to be are cigarettes and processed meats. Hand can meat, bacon, these things can burn your telomeres 14 years faster. Bacon, why? I loved you. But on the other hand, you can boost telomerase activity keeping those caps nice and strong. And you could do that by regular exercising and eating a whole lot of whole plant-based foods. So yeah, if you don't wanna get wrinkles so early, then go eat some spinach and a whole lot of veggies. It's much cheaper than Botox. Actually, I have no idea how much Botox costs, so I could be wrong. And of course, frequent exercise, not only for your telomere, but it's one of the fastest way to create brain cells and you're gonna be jacked and just all around good, you're gonna take over this world. What was this video about again? Oh yes, cameras. All right, let's get to that. Do I look legit? You look pretty legit. Just act natural. Whoa, it's heavy. For this first test, we're gonna start off with the Aerie Alexa, which has filmed a ton of different films. For example, the latest Blade Runner, which won an Oscar for best cinematography. And of course, the iPhone XS Max mounted next to it. Let's see if you can figure out which camera this sequence was shot on. Here we go. And now here's the same sequence from the other camera. Okay, so now before I spew all my opinions at you, I want you guys to take that poll on the top right. Tell me which camera you like better. Camera one on the left, camera two on the right. And also this song was sent to me by one of my viewers, Dimmed. Thanks for sending this over and letting me use it. SoundCloud link in description. All right, so you guys ready for the results? Camera one is the iPhone XS Max. Camera two, Airy Alexa. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start off by saying the iPhone XS Max Smart HDR is really, really impressive. I mean, just look at the sky on the shot. I mean, the HDR is pulling all that detail out of the sky and it's just insane that at first glance, the iPhone can look better than a camera that costs a hundred times more. 
Look at um, Jean, AKA Potato Jet. All right, so now let's see what happens if we take the iPhone and stack it up against a RED camera that shoots 5K. The results, once again, pretty similar. You can see more detail coming out of that sky and the car. So what the hell is going on here? Now, what I think is interesting about this totally not pink phone is that the hardware itself, not that special. It's physically impossible to cram an awesome sensor and lens into this little tiny body. But what they focus on is the software. It's a smart camera and it's constantly analyzing the environment and making tweaks. It's like having a tiny munchkin color sitting in there making adjustments as you're shooting. You can literally see it change. This on the other hand, super powerful sensor, super powerful optics and zero smart features. And honestly, if you're on a professional set, you don't want the camera to start doing everything on its own. It's all fully manually controlled. But as far as camera phones go, it's really awesome to see what kind of feature and innovations they're putting into these phones where the footage comes out looking awesome just right out of the camera. All you have to do is pull it out of your pocket and hit that record button. This is really, really impressive. So does this mean professional filmmakers can sell all their expensive equipment and just rely on their phones from now on? Not quite. The Aria Alexa looks great right out of the camera, but it's not designed to go straight from the camera onto the internet. It's designed to be flexible. So after you shoot it, you put in the work to get it to look exactly the way you want it. And the look you're gonna wanna get out of your camera is gonna change all the time depending on what you're shooting and the mood you're going for. And if the HDR look is the look you're going for, then the professional camera is gonna be able to get it better every single time. There's also this undeniable cinematic quality that comes out of a professional camera. And I don't think it's something that can be easily explained with specs. You just have to look at it and say, oh, this looks like a movie or this looks like an Instagram story. You got a nice soft like glow of light coming in. We're gonna zoom this lens all the way over to a 90 millimeter. GD's gonna stand right there and we're gonna get a cool little shot with very shallow depth of field. She's gonna pitch your social media accounts or something. Wow, can you stop being so spammy? <laughs> hey guys, you can find me at Judy L on Instagram or YouTube. You can follow me or whatever. <laughs> so yeah, let's not forget that a lens is a really, really important part of the camera. You have limitless option on professional cameras, but using the zoom option on phones just never looks that great. So let's say you want to shoot an interview with a tight angle lens, you're going to get much better results on a professional lens. Unless of course, Steve's the one in front of the camera, then you're screwed no matter what. Now let's talk about lighting for a second. A lot of times if we're trying to create a cinematic lighting environment, we create a lot of contrast, which includes creating a lot of dark pockets of light. So it's pretty important that you can point a camera at a dark patch and still have it look good. And in this example, the red can look into a dark area and yeah, it does look dark, but it still looks good, beautiful and sharp. Opposed to the iPhone that just looks super grainy, mushy and just like a little bit like puke. It reminds me of puke. <laughs> so yeah, pretty much to nobody's surprise, an iPhone is not as good as a cinema camera. But at the same time, I do think it's fascinating how good these phones are starting to look with all the artificial intelligence, alien spaceship technology going into these things. And who knows, maybe we'll start seeing some of these smart features in future DSLRs and mirrorless cameras. I mean, this technology is moving so fast that in 10 years, the way we see a professional camera could be completely different. So this is really exciting. Now, after all this talk about cameras and technology, I feel like I have to state the obvious, which is that professional cameras are better than your iPhone, but nothing even comes close to being as important as your creativity, your content, your ideas. So if the iPhone's the only thing you have access to, shoot it on the iPhone. No one's gonna really care. They would rather watch something good on an iPhone than on a professional camera. There's plenty of professionally shot content out there that nobody wants to watch. So yeah, you should totally check out my video course, link in description, where I talk all about how to create good content and I try to put technical stuff aside for the most part and just focus on what is good content? Why do we enjoy movies? What's a story? What specifically makes the difference between good and bad? I mean, go sign up and then you could just watch this beautiful face for two and a half hours. Oh my God, the sun is setting so fast. I swear three minutes ago, it was so much brighter back there. Most important of all, don't forget to chill once in a while. Stress is straight up kryptonite to your telometers. It just chops it down and shrinks it. So every day, 10, 15 minutes, just take a deep breath, chill. Don't even think about anything, especially in this current day of age where everyone's just like hustle, hustle, hustle. Don't forget to catch up on your beauty sleep and take a big deep breath every day. <sighs> okay, good. I feel much better. But let's wrap this up with the usual reading of comments. So let's take a look. Next week's collab going to be fire. Yep. 
Actually, I'm gonna see you tomorrow, Armando. So bring your A7S and we'll battle it out. Don't be upset about all the comments. Why, why'd you have to capitalize the up? Vicky says, hey, it would be great if you make a video on Sony's A7 III. I wanna see your perspective on the A7 III. So that's coming. And I actually spent four to five years as like a Sony guy. My main camera used to be the Sony FS700 with an Odyssey 7Q. I've shot many projects on the FS7, the F5, the A7S Mark II. So I do love Sony, just not as much as I love more Canon and I'll kind of talk about why when we do the video with Armando. So if you want to know why, then make sure you're subscribed. And while you're at it, you might as well just hit that bell button right next to it. I mean, I mean, you're already there. You're already down there with your mouse, just like clicking. It's just like, just the bell, dude, just, just do it. What is up with all you guys? Hey, why are you guys gonna stop capitalizing this? You look like the kid from Up. You know what, Thomas? Capris, I'm gonna dislike that comment. I wonder why YouTube doesn't show how many dislikes a comment has. Love everything this kid uploads. Thumbs up for this video. Stop it. <laughs> you look like the up from the kid. Okay, that's kind of funny. While the EOS R was constantly hunting and getting out of focus during your first comparison. Literally, I've been using this camera every single day for the last week, and this is the only time it had focus issues. The EOS R's autofocus is honestly really, really good. And for some weird reason, there was something going on with this shot where it had trouble. I think it's because of all the light coming in from the side and all the contrast going on in the photo behind it. It was just having trouble tracking it. Stuff like this always happens, okay? Like it works perfectly fine until I see the autofocus is doing well and then it just like, dips in and out of focus. That's just how life works for me. What do you think about the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera? <laughs> I don't know, I pre-ordered it like a year ago and still hasn't come, so I'll let you know eventually. Keep up the good work. Guys, you look like you're getting upset. I'm not getting upset and you guys are totally shortening my telometers right now. I think I'm just gonna have to give Hero 7 a shot for vlogging. I've actually heard a lot of people talking about the Hero 7. I might have to go pick one up, but I just bought this thing. My bank account, man. Anyways, I made it past 10 minutes and this video needs to be rendered out in 4K, which means this video is gonna take forever to render. So I might as well start it now. So I'm gonna peace out here. See you guys later.